Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about how to use a cooling curve to correct for an error in an enthalpy change experiment. So first of all, let's set up a simple experiment. We have a beaker with a thermometer in and we're going to add some sodium hydroxide and some hydrochloric acid to our beaker. We are going to record the initial temperature before and then the final temperature after they've finished reacting. Now here's the equation for how they would react, just as an example, and this is a neutralization equation, so this will be exothermic. So we would expect our temperature in to increase. However, we have a problem. Because we haven't got perfect insulation, we're gonna get quite a bit of heat loss from our solution. So the problem is, the final temperature we measure will not be as high as it should be because some of that heat has been lost to the surroundings. Now, there is a way to correct for this or to attempt to correct for this, and that's by using something called a cooling curve. So a cooling curve is a method which gives you a more accurate temperature change a more accurate delta T. Once you've got a more accurate delta T, you can then bang that in your heat equals MC delta T equation to get your delta H. So how does it work? So what we're going to do is, here's a graph, I've got temperature against time, and for the first three minutes, I'm just going to add one of my chemicals to the liquid, let's say it's the sodium hydroxide, for example, and I'm going to record the temperature of that solution. Now, as it's just sodium hydroxide, nothing's happening. There's no reaction going on. So the temperature should remain about constant. At the fourth, well, it doesn't have to be exactly the fourth minute. In my example, at the fourth minute, I have not recorded a temperature change or a temperature. Instead, I have added the other chemical. So in my example, the HCl. And I'm just going to allow those to react. And as they react, the temperature will increase because neutralization is exothermic. From the fifth minute onwards, you can see I have started re-recording what my temperatures are. And due to heat loss, you can see the temperature is going to steadily go down and down and down as heat is lost to the surroundings. How we would get the temperature change for this reaction, now you should always use a pencil, because I want my, my lines to stand out more, I'm going to be very naughty and use a red pen. We're going to draw a line of best fit for one of the chemicals on its own. So I would say that's about there. And we're going to draw a line of best fit for after we added the other chemical and let them react. So what's that going to be? Something like that. Now at four minutes, so this was the time when we added the chemical, we can see that this is our initial temperature. So I would read back on that line to that reading there. This is the start temperature. And if we go up, Like so again, use a ruler. Wherever this second line is, that is our final temperature. So what's that about there? So here's our final temperature. So our temperature change is from here to here. This is how we can get our delta T. We can then bang that in our heat equals MC delta T equation and use that to calculate the delta H. And what this does, you can see our line here is actually higher than our reading. And so this is counteracting for the, for the fact that some of your temperature will have been lost to the surroundings. Some of the heat will have leached away because we didn't have perfect insulation.